You know, I, I think I agree with both of you, which is, I guess, good news, but bad news in the sense that it's just really hard to make out what the market really, at least the after hours market, which is admittedly not the full you know, brunt and thrust of a full day's trading, even though it'll be a slow, slow week, uh, given where we are in August, of what numbers were really spectacularly good. Look, making a billion dollars in a quarter is pretty hard. Making a billion dollars on top of the 19 they already expected of you is really just dramatically good. But it is interesting to the point about the whisper number and positioning. We did end about where the options market sort of expected us to be. So you do wonder if some of the fix was already sort of in from a trading perspective, well in advance of what was a, a relatively humble victory lap that the CEO took this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, so ultimately, Alex, and you know, one could say then that NVIDIA was a victim of its own success, right? I mean, if I was to take away the name of the stock and I said to you, there's a company that grew revenue 122% year over year, has risen 150% uh, in share price year to date, trades are on 36 uh, forward multiple there, still expects increased demand for its product with a large part of CapEx of the biggest companies in the world still going to that company. Surely you'd still get into this company. You wouldn't have drawn down the 2% you saw pre-market uh, or in the market and the 6% afterwards, surely? No, absolutely not. And, and I think analysts in general agree. Almost no one has this at a sell. Few have this at a hold. Almost everyone has this at a buy or an outperform or a strong buy. And the numbers that they saw today are just not materially going to change that. You know, it's unfortunate that we look at it and say, well, Revenue growth year on year, you know, looking on a quarterly basis, is half of what it was before, but it was 250% before. You couldn't keep that up even in a small cap stock that was, you know, trading at just a few million dollars of revenue, much less the one of the largest two companies in the world where if they kept on that pace for a few years, they'd have more money than just about we have money to give them. And that would be, you know, obviously impossible and a real problem. Alex, was there anything sort of in the report that that was concerning at all? You know, obviously, there's a lot being read into, will the Blackwell chips be here, will they not? And you know, there just wasn't enough information to say yes or, or no. I think the, the, the hard part is there wasn't anything really great or bad about the report. The numbers were great in the report and, and the, the conference call seemed to really just support that it's business as usual over here. We're just continuing to keep on crushing it. And the market seemed to say, well, that's just not good enough for us, which, you know, if you can't win for winning's sake, then, you know, you wonder when do you just stop playing the game? And uh, just looking, I think, slightly more forward, there's been a lot made about the increased competition uh, for NVIDIA from the likes of AMD, who are sort of starting out their journey into this space as well. Um, how big a challenge uh, does NVIDIA have from any kind of rivals at this point or even over sort of the coming year or so? You know, it has some, but it has, say, three quarters to 80 percent of the AI chip market, right? It, it's the market in that sense. It's in its own way, its own economic indicator, you know, becoming as important as the GDP stats that we're going to get on tomorrow. So it has rivals and those rivals will kick on, but it has such an installed benefit and base of where they are. It's going to take years, even if all of its competitors got together to try to put together a few interesting products that... I think they have a moat for at least two or three years before they have to seriously consider the impact of that competitor base.